Julia is my husband's niece. So it's, it's my niece who I've known for a long time. And I'm really proud of her. Uh, she went to community colleges in the Bay Area, then went to UC Berkeley, got her bachelor's degree in chemical engineering, and then decided to go on for a PhD in engineering education. So she knows way more stuff than me now. <laughs> um, and she went to Purdue University in Indiana, which is one of the maybe about 10 schools that have PhDs in educa engineering education. And so rather knowing a lot about the, each field of engineering, she knows more about like how we should be teaching engineering. And um, she's now working at University of San Francisco. So I'm psyched that she's in the area, living up in the city. And um, so Julia's here with us until 12. She was able to give us some time and she's gonna cover the topic of social justice and engineering. So Julia, take it away. Thanks so much. I, um, yeah. Um, that was, I feel a little warm and fuzzy because of the introduction and I'm, I want to just kind of do a shout out to Joanne, like mostly that you guys are incredibly lucky to have this advocate like on your back, right? Like she will um, utilize her as much as possible. She has like the powerhouse to like get, help you in your career forward and like solidify engineering. I'm an engineer because of her and I think it's, you guys are at a very good school and in good hands. Um, in that regard, I want to talk today about how technology impacts our culture and kind of implicit with that is also your responsibility to engage in technology and to think through technology when you're creating it, when you're analyzing it, working with it, to see how what type of culture do we want to create and how the technology we make um, is a representation of that. And I want to start off actually with a thinking through what technologies deeply impact the way we experience the world. And so I want, um, so think about in your own life, a technology and go ahead and put it in the chat. And I'm going to give one example first. And I want to think about warm running water and how amazing it is to have clean water in a faucet that is just on a tap. Like that technology saves lives. It saves time every day. And so many places in the world, right? Like people have to walk for hours a day to get water that's not necessarily clean and if you actually want to cook on it you have to like burn wood like and the engineering brilliance and infrastructure that has gone into making that in terms of water treatment plants um civil engineering putting up the pipes the mechanical engineers to design the um water tanks and the fuel process and um from the chemical engineering perspective, I mean, chemical engineers do a lot of things with tanks, so there's like um, stuff in there. So go ahead and think about a technology in your own life that has really impacted the way you live. And go put it in the chat. So we have cellular. Oh, refrigeration is a huge one. Soap, detergent, keeping sanitation. That's a, right now in COVID. Heaters, being able to be in all these different climates in the world. Um, the internet having so much information at our fingertips. These are all different huge technologies that kind of impact what we can do. And um, do I have screen sharing abilities? Yes, I do. And so what we want to talk about today, kind of going from building off of that, is um, we want to talk about the politics that are embedded in these technologies. And when I say politics, I don't mean Democrat and Republican politics that you might be hearing about. We want to talk about um, the politics actually as an arrangement of power and authority in human associations. And so essentially, like right now, society has given me the power uh, in this classroom dynamic to decide what we talk about, right? Not everyone has the authority to decide the, uh, the topics of today. You might have um, 
the government creates stop signs and that stop sign um, creates a society to um, allows you to create a certain type of order and function. So it's not like power and authority is bad necessarily, um, but to actually recognize how these um, authority is embedded into these technologies. Now, historically, there's been this idea that technology is neutral, but it's the people that actually engage with the pop technology that creates negative. So you might've heard the term, guns don't kill people, people kill people. And this idea is that it's not the gun or the physical item that creates the negative impact of a society, but it's actually society that takes the technology and turns it into um, this item that can be used for war. And so every once in a while, there's like this notion of a very important paper and it's called a seminal paper in terms of research. And the winner article that I sent out that hopefully you were able to watch the video, this, is, this was considered a seminal paper in the field. And it basically, the seminal paper changed the discussion of what like philosophers and a lot of engineers and such were thinking about technology. So before they kind of thought of it as neutral and kind of simplifying it here, but now there is a more discussion about the fact that, so like a stop sign is a great example. It's like, well, you can look at a stop sign and you can choose to stop or not. And that is when a person in society has control. But where are examples that actually the control is within the technology and not with the person's decision. And so he disguised, he, he brought up a lot of different examples. And one of them is this bridge that is this physical bridge that currently exists that goes into Long Island. And the person, um, Moses, that designed it, he was racist. And he, it's very clearly documented, he did not want poor people and people of color coming in Long Island. And so luckily in his own mind, he thought, well, how do I separate and prevent these people from coming into the island? I'm gonna make a bridge that's physically too small for buses to go under. And therefore only people that have cars and in New York, only wealthy people were able to have cars because public transit was so easily accessible. And essentially what he was able to do is separate poor people from wealthy people. And in that there was the race separation as well because of historical limit um, and income inequalities that are associated with race. And so this is one specific example, but we can actually see it in our like day-to-day -day lives. And so we can look at specifically artifacts or artifacts in this case is kind of interchanged with technology, but also like any item that can have power. So how do these items have power in a classroom? And so we can look at a classroom that's designed in a huge lecture hall. Can you see this okay, Joanne? Should I actually make it more present? <laughs> Okay. Yeah, it's fine. Yeah, okay. Oh, that's I just great. Want to that's, great. that's better. Yeah. So here we have this huge lecture hall, right? And it's very clear by the design that the lecturer is the person that's getting to decide how learning is done and who's being done. Like if you wanted to do group works where people like started talking and discussing, it would be physically hard in this space. Also, the where you are in this lecture hall will very much determine your experience in it right so like if you're sitting in the back like it's shown on the right you'll be very far away from the learn from the center of attention versus if you were right up close to the lecture now here are two different examples with different kind of classrooms you can see by the organization they're learning might be done in a lot of different ways. 
Um, you can have self-directed learning. You can have a teacher with a presentation, but the teacher it's designed so the teacher can go around the room. You can have teamwork into the physical design impacts the classroom design. Um, I'm gonna take a second. Does ever can I have a couple of thumbs up if you're getting where I'm going? Okay. Um, sweet. Awesome. Okay, so here we have, this is the classroom that's a very common design in graduate level spaces where you actually, um, like if you're going to do a reading, like a lot of my PhD classes were in a classroom that looked like this. We were, we all kind of read the same book and then we just kind of had large discussions to talk about it. And so the physical space matters in how the learning happens. And so we wanna then look at specific technologies and explore the authoritarian and democratic values. And so again, we're not kind of looking at the more like this authoritarian isn't maybe what you normally think of authoritarian and democratic. Authority means you have a small central government of control that decides the rules versus a, the large base of people that decide um, society rules. And so in authoritarian technologies, you have um, nuclear, power, nuclear power is a really great example because you need to, in order for the actual system to function, you have to have clear rules. You have to be localized because it generates so much power in one single space. And you're going to have a few people that are controlling the system in order to be safe. It's going to be inherently unstable because if you kind of, if one thing happens, the whole society power can go down. Um, and it's very powerful. And so here we also on the right have this um, large scale agriculture is very similar to this, right? You have a very small group of people that are determining the food for the whole um, society. Now we have democratic values and technologies. Solar panel and small or community or local farms are a great example of this. So man-centered, uh, using the word man there, it's like individual-centered, let's actually say. They're not, you can't, like one solar power plant isn't going to provide so, enough energy for the whole city, but if you actually have it in, enough, you can actually create a grid that is distributive. Um, each one is going to be relatively weak, but if you actually have, when, like when we have the situation that happened in Texas is a great example, like that was a more centralized system because it was isolated. You have a snowstorm, everyone's power gets locked out, but when you have it more distributed, you can, other energy can come in and make up, and that's why it's more durable and resourceful and similar with foods. And so kind of looking at the example of comparing nuclear and solar, you can see that there is inherent qualities in the technology itself that allow for different governmental um, societal structures to exist. And so in the paper, um, these are all the different ways that he kind of categorized ways technology would be. So here we have designs with political effects in a particular context. So you can design it so there's an intended political effect. There's a political effect with a bias towards a certain situation, or there's an unintended effect that isn't necessarily malicious but it happens to come. And then we'll give examples in the next two slides, but I'm just gonna talk through. And then there's inherent political technologies, technologies that require, and then technologies that are compatible. So in terms of designing with a political effect, so the Moses, the bridge example to Long Island was a very clear intent. There was, um, when he was designing it, there was, a he wanted um, that separation 
of people. Then there's a biased. So the example um, in the middle is of a large food processing plant. And when they were actually designing the technology, they didn't think about, oh, we want to do away with small scales farming that um, reduces jobs for um, like agriculture workers, but they ended up doing it. But if you actually look at where the funding was coming from, how the government was situated, that is, there was the money behind it and the politics behind it that resulted in that technology to begin with. And then you have completely unintended, like you have a curb that doesn't have an, a ramp for someone who has a wheelchair. And so we're going back to this concept of authority. This no one, like someone who's in a wheelchair cannot access this side of town because it's unsafe for them to be using their wheelchair. In it. And so they are physically unable, similarly to Moses with the unintended that actually um, you couldn't get in through a bus, a person in a wheelchair couldn't get onto the sidewalk. And so there, even though the designer didn't maliciously think about it, it still had the same result. And there was also no funding and corporate backing to say, okay, we're going to prevent or we're going to favor um, able-bodied people. And so the other example is the inherent political technologies. So there's a certain technologies that require social order. And the nuclear also fits into the required, but so does a ship. You can't run a ship without having a captain. Like if you're trying to create a democratic where everyone had power, equal power in a ship, it would be chaos. Um, in like I'm not actually a voting person, but I think voting people would agree. You need to have one person that can make the decisions in a case of an emergency in order to be safely um, traveling the seas. And then you have compatibility with technology. So you could have an authoritarian system with solar like that is possible, but you can also have a democratic system where rules are made equally with solar. So it's more this um, compatibility element. So it doesn't, solar doesn't require a democratic system, but it's compatible with a democratic system. But like a shit requires an authoritarian system. Okay, so I just put a lot of information on you guys, right? And so um, I want you to spend some time to think about what technologies have you seen that um, have political impacts? Okay, let me, so, so here we have a Google Doc. And so I'm putting this Google Doc in the chat, if I can. Mm -hmm. I'm just seeing the last, yes, roads, automobiles, and launching. Those are huge elements of the impact our lives. Um, but I want everyone to go ahead and click the donk presentation form. And go ahead and find technologies and find, just do a Google image search and find pictures. If you can think about, um, and we'll take a few minutes. And what I want you to do is edit this document and actually put copy and paste pictures in the intended categories and the unintended categories. So find pictures of examples with technologies with intended political impacts and unintended political impacts.
Julia, can we put in things that had um, good impacts? Yes, like, like we could we could put in one where we show a crosswalk with a curb that has um, the I don't know what it's called either. The ramp. The ramp, right? Yeah. So we could put some good things in too, right? Absolutely. Okay. Stop sharing for a second. We'll just give you some time okay. to work on this. Thanks.
let's do one more minute and then we'll start talking about these. These are awesome examples, you guys. Okay. okay. I think everyone has access to this file anyways, but let's go ahead and kind of look at what we got. So this is the intended consequences. Um, I'm kind of, so like, I feel like some of these are very, there's a very clear, like <laughs> this very happy kind of woman has access to the van. A blind man has a ramp that um, there's, we have infrastructure that's taking in account of pedestrians and creating safe bikeways. Um, I'm kind of curious about this electric system does someone want to who put the electricity system oh hi uh, i was the one that put the electric thing in can you and, uh, share yeah That's what you're thinking yeah i was thinking like uh it was since it's like supposed to help a lot of people get uh like electricity it, it fit the um the role yeah, so it's like the government put up this electric grid so that now the access to electricity is there. Yeah. Yes, great. And then who put this these um, spikes underneath the freeway? Yes. Can you explain what you were thinking with that? Uh, <laughs> I just thought because the government just wants to get rid of homeless people from that area. Yeah. So it's like this government, the infrastructure to prevent people from sleeping underneath freeways. Yeah, more, so like more specifically the city from getting like too many homeless people in the area. Yeah. Yep, these are all great of ways designs have created intentional impact on society. Um, and here we have some more mm, gated communities. I'm curious what um, put the food and what you were thinking about that. I, I put the fast food in and uh, I, I've, I've heard the notion that fast food was a way to sort of, you know, kind of uh, weaken the, um, the dietary standards of marginalized cultures. That's a big one. So like this intended, like focusing on how can we I, yeah, there's a lot to unpack with that one, right? Is because um, food is connected to health, which is connected to resources, and um, yeah. Thank you. Who put the project Maven? That was also me. What else were you thinking of that, Cody? That big brother. Okay, <laughs> I can see <laughs> you have a lot of. Um, you think in very big systems, that's awesome. <laughs> and then um, we have surveillance cameras and a person attempting to sleep on a bench, um, a lock, which definitely can prevent access, um, gates. Ooh, who put, did you, was this also you, Cody, the wall? That, good call, that is also me, the Berlin wall, yes. Yes, and um, who put water management? That was me. Yes, but Adam, what were you thinking with the water management? Well, with water management, mostly because it was more authoritative and centralized, 
And yeah. with the political impact, there could be similar to farming agriculture, incentive behind behind governments to either improve or not improve the water management system, which could have an unintended or very much intended impact to the local community because everyone will rely on this one area for their source of clean running water. Yes. And who put in plastic straws? Oh, that was me. Yes, Lewis. What are you what are you thinking with the plastic straws? So I was I was actually thinking unintended, but um, as we were talking, I realized that everything kind of has an intended and unintended. Um, um, yeah. So, impact. so were you thinking about like the waste of plastic straws? Yes, I was thinking about the unintended like environmental, yeah. political, um, you know, backlash that came along with that. Um, but if we're talking about intended political impact, um, we can we can talk about um, you know say for driving while you're drinking on the road or you know um, the yeah yeah so there was a very clear intended impact which is to have ease of drinking like in you know in moving but then there's also the in intended unintended impact which is then fire. Yes. Yeah. I'm like, I think you got it. Good. <laughs> okay. And so then we can kind of design for unintended, but ooh, what is the person thinking with the unintended impact of virtual reality? What are you guys? Who? That, that was me again. Cody. And um, <laughs> it just that it's, it's a limited resource um, that it, it's not accessible to everyone. It's got a high price, um, it's a high price ticket item. And <laughs> You know, I just I just see that that sort of technology along with cellular technology. I actually put all three of these in. Okay. Uh, to be honest, sort of all three of them are sort of they're they're not intentionally, but they do somehow are sort of scripted into an elitist system. Okay, so like the element of access of resources in terms. Um, it's an interesting because like I, I feel like there's been so many, especially with cell phones, unintended, you know, like the person who designed the cell phone in the beginning, there's a lot of things that's coming up, especially in terms of surveillance, in turn like the question about like are the cell phones listening to you? Resources. Yes. And I mean, so I spent about six months living in South Africa. And the pushback I would have for that, like there's this thing about this term in South Africa referred to as farmer phones. And those are very like $20 phones because the people who are farmers are usually the poorest and that's the phones that they would use. But people in the urban areas, you didn't have to be making much to have a really good quality phone. And you would get a phone before you would get a laptop. And it's because phones were just so critically important to how people live and manage in South Africa. And um, that even, you didn't have to be very wealthy. Um, you, wouldn't, you wouldn't have a car. You might not even, you might still have like your roof, like the quality of your house might not be very great, but you would have a good phone. Like that, it's this element of priority of where you want to spend your money. And usually phones um, are one of the first things you get just to kind of push back with that. Um, I love these explanations here. <laughs> Who wrote these explanations out? I'm kind of curious. I wrote for the, uh, the I unintentionally wrote CFS instead uh -huh. of CFCs, oh. but uh, I wrote the uh, chlorofluorocarbons. So I, I decided I just, uh, I actually I accidentally had a, a duster remover and I just thought, oh, that's a good idea because uh, canned gas used to have this chemical mm -hmm. that was unintentionally uh, causing the depletion of the ozone layer. And I just thought it was something that was unintentional. Yeah. And so, I, yeah. So this CFC is, you know, it was part of technology, a lot of different technologies, and it was a huge ozone depletion. Yeah. Yeah. 
And then, and then I, I did the microwave. Yeah. Joanne. Just that I know it was, it was not designed for the kitchen. It was designed, that technology was designed for military or defense. And I made a, might have spelled defense wrong. Yeah. But I th I've been in, being in New York, I've been in small places where there are very small kitchens and a microwave is very beneficial. So I'm thinking that it's kind of nice that even if you have a small living area, you could still cook stuff. Yeah. So it opens up like all these food possibilities that wouldn't be acceptable if you didn't have like a space for a hole. So, and then we have nets and fishing. Um, yeah, and it's like the unintended consequences of what, what it's doing to the oceans. And well, I mean, I think we've been able to go through the general theme, and it sounds like most like everyone's kind of on board and gets this primal notion about like how technology does impact and have inherent biases and kind of um not like biases yes but that's actually not what i'm saying inherent political natures and it can allow people to um, do certain things and create oh it can open doors or it can shut them um, it has there is inherent nature of technology that creates power um, and possibilities and so i think the most relevant piece about this with engineers and social justice going forward is thinking about that responsibility in what you put, I like to call your life energy. You're going to make choices about where you work and what fields you want to go into and recognizing that your work and the technology you build has these impacts on our culture and in our society. And so you can when you're making things, but also when you're making choices on what you want to work on, to think through how your values align with the world you want to create and making sure that you're adding to um, technologies that align with the things you care about. You do. And so that's what I want to kind of, how I see these things adding forward. Um, does anyone have any other questions or thoughts? Okay. Well, thank you so much for your guys' time. I'm going to bow out at this time. Hey, Julia, before yeah. you go, um, yeah, thanks so much because I, you know, this is a really important area in engineering. And I think that you have so much knowledge in this area and that's what you're bringing to the University of San, San Francisco where they're just starting an engineering program. Um, Julia is also involved a lot with service learning. So like abroad programs and programs where engineers are designing things for the community. And I just think that that's such an important element of engineering. And I'm really appreciative that you've gotten so much experience in that area and you bring that to the table. And thanks for bringing it to our table. Well, thanks for inviting me. Yeah, this was fun. It was great to do it. Okay, well, thanks a lot, Julia. Okay, thank, thank you. you. Okay, bye. Goodbye.